dear students today i am going to discuss about uh, the topic elispot that means enzyme linked immunospot assay so you have already studied about elisa or enzyme linked uh, immunosorbent assay this particular assay technique is a modified version of elisa and uh, it was developed in 1983 by cecil jarkinski so what is the, basically the principle of uh, elispot assay so this particular assay is a highly sensitive immune assay that measures the frequency of cytokine secreting cells at the single cell level and in this particular assay cells are cultured on a surface coated with a specific capture antibody in the presence or absence of stimuli and here proteins uh, which is the cytokines uh, that are secreted by the cells will be captured by the specific antibodies present on the surface of the well so after an appropriate incubation time cells are removed and the secreted molecules uh, is detected using a detection antibody in a similar procedure that uh, to that uh, employed uh, by the uh, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is elisa the detection of antibody uh, is either biotinylated and followed by abidin streptavidin uh, enzyme conjugate or maybe the antibody Uh, is directly conjugated uh, to an, an enzyme so here you can see the streptavidin enzyme or else the antibody that is directly linked with that conjugated with the end to the enzyme so by using a substrate with a precipitating rather uh, than a soluble product the end result is visible uh, as as spot here you can see the spots as spot Uh, precipitating substrate spot on the surface so each spot corresponds to an individual cytokine secreting cells so here we are uh, trying to quantify this is a very highly sensitive method and we are quantifying immunoglobulin secreting cells means who are secreting the cytokines at a single cell level and this particular techniques been used to investigate specific immune responses to infections like cancer allergies of human diseases like that and uh, it has a detection level as low as one cell in 1 lakh this makes it one of the most sensitive cellular assay now step by step i'm going to discuss about the techniques or the procedure of elispot so first we have to coat the uh, well or uh, inner surface of the well with an antibody so the method is known as antibody coat so cytokine specific monoclonal capture antibodies are immobilized on uh, an ethanol treated uh, pvdf membrane plate this is the first of this part second cell is the incubation of cell so here the cells are added to the wells antibody coated wells in the presence or absence of activation stimuli and then incubated to allow the cytokines to release or to be secreted by the cells so that is why this particular step is known as cell incubation step the third step is known as the cytokine capture step in this particular step the secreted cytokines in the cytokines that has been released by the cells will bind to the antibodies this is known as antibody capture or sorry cytokine capture on the membrane immediately surrounding the activated cells next step is detection of antibodies so following removal of the cells and washing of the plate to wells then biotinylated cytokine specific detection antibodies are added to the well so these are the enzyme tagged antibodies 
Next, we have to add some enzyme, streptavidine enzyme conjugate to enable the formation of spots on the membrane. Streptavidine enzyme conjugate is added to the well. The sixth step is addition of substrate. Now the enzyme specific substrate should be added for the detection of uh, this uh, secretion of cytokines. So here we are using a colorimetric method. So colorimetric substrate uh, is added uh, to the wells and will form an insoluble precipitate when catalyzed by the enzyme. A visible representation of uh, cytokine release by a single activated cell. And then we have to analyze the spots. And here the spots are counted in an automated telespot reader or under a discretion in, in a dissection micro, my, microscope and the frequency of uh, secreting cells is calculated. So this is all about the procedure of telespot assay. Now why to apply telespot assay? So mostly what we have seen that these are the technique to be applied for the detection of cytokines released by the cells. So one by one cells we can count from one lakh cells. If a, your sample contains one lakh cell, so one lakh from one lakh cell, one by one cells, how they are secreting, what is the frequency of their cytokine secretion, that can be analyzed, that can be detected. And this is very, we can say highly specific, highly sensitive technique. So most of the cases, the cell-mediated immune response, where we have seen that the B T cells and the B cells, the, mostly the T cells, they are secreting cytokines when uh, there is any infection, it may be viral, bacterial uh, infections. So to investigate specific immune responses in various diseases and including infections, and also to study vaccine efficacy or maybe in case of inflammations, allergies, cancer, or autoimmune diseases, we can use this assay. For vaccine efficacy, here you have seen that for vaccine efficacy, mostly we are focusing on the interferons, interferon gamma, and there are two types of helper T cells, helper T helper cells one and T helper cell two, they are releasing some cytokines in the form of interleukins that may be interleukin, uh, 4 interleukin 10, 12, 13, and 5. And these interleukins will activate and also uh, activate the monocytes, to means uh, antigen presenting cells to act upon. So, in case of vaccine efficiency, in case of any infections caused by mycobacterium, say, one example has been given here in case of infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis. So for this diagnosis process, we can use this particular technique. And also to check the quality of immune responses, to check the cytotoxic T cell responses or helper T cell responses, we can use this technique. So this is about the cell-mediated immune response. This particular technique can also be used for the humoral response also. So Antibody secreting cells, means the B cells, the development and as well as monitoring the new vaccines and vaccine candidate can also be analyzed using these cells. So how the cytotoxic T cells, these are the high cytotoxic T cells, how they can target the cells as well as they can uh, induce lysis of the infected cells or apoptosis of the infected cells that can also be analyzed using simply using this, this assay technique. Uh, by measuring the uh, secretion or by measuring the cytokines or interleukins released by the typical cells or the cytotoxic T cells. So this is all about the spot assay, their uh, principle, their procedure and application. Now I'm coming to immunofluorescence. So immunofluorescence is also a qualitative observation techniques, a qualitative process. Here we have to use some some uh, some agent that is known as fluorophore or fluorescent dye, and the instrument we need for this purpose is a microscope, as a fluorescent microscope or confocal microscope. We need to analyze the data. So, 
the principle of uh, this particular technique relies on the principle of antigen antibody interactions so here the antibody that is tagged with the fluorophore or a fluorochrome or fluorescent compound an antibody will bind to a specific antigen of interest so antigen antibody complex then emits a green or red signals it depends on the nature of the fluorescent probe and when we are illuminating it generally using a uv light it will fluoresce so checking the fluorescent intensity and checking the color or the texture of the fluorescent light we can interpret whether antigen antibody complexation took place or not this particular technique was first introduced by Albert Coombs in 1941. So these are the commonly used fluorophore that can be used in, in immunofluorescent technique. So fluorescent isothiocyanate, FITC, RITC, rhodamine isothiocyanate, uh, then uh, phycoerythrin, and then lucifer yellow uh, dye, acridine orange. So these are the normally used fluorophore or fluorochrome in immunofluorescent assay. Now I'm coming to the principle. So as I said that this particular assay technique employs the antigen antibody complexation reaction. And here the antibody that is tagged with the fluorophore that will be induced uh, to the specimen. And when it is introduced to the specimen means it will interact with the antigen, which is specific antigen, then the specimen will fluoresce when we are eliminating the specimen using an ultraviolet light. And with a dark background, we have to choose to get a better, uh, better result or to get a better uh, enhancement of your, uh, of your picture. So a dark background should be considered. Now, the fluorophore will absorb this energy that is here using as, a, as an incident light, as UV light, so it will, uh, it will it will absorb the energy and will be excited. So when the fluorophore will go back to its ground state from its excited state, it will emit some light in the form of longer wavelength or lower energy wavelength light, which is known as a fluorescence. The property is known as fluorescence. So simply we are using the property of fluorescence. And interval of absorption and emission is very short here. So occurs in nanosecond. That is why the technique is very fast, uh, is very rapid, we can detect. But here with a brief exposure of UV light, but with constant exposure of UV light, the result is not very good only because of the short lifetime of the fluorophore. There are two types of immunofluorescing assay. One is the direct one, another one is the indirect one. In the direct one, we are using this primary antibody that is actually tagged with the fluorophore. Here we are not using any secondary antibody. In case of indirect fluorescence, immunofluorescence, we are using two antibodies. One is the primary that is untagged and the secondary. So first we are adding the primary antibody that has a specificity towards antigen and then after washing we are adding the secondary antibody and here the secondary antibody is contributed with the fluorophore. So we are indirectly estimating immunofluorescence or fluorescence of the sample. That is why these are the two types of immunofluorescent assay. One is the direct one, another one is the indirect. So this is the direct one. Here you can see here the primary antibody is tagged with the fluorophore and here the secondary antibody is tagged with the fluorophore, not the primary antibody is tagged with the fluorophore. So this one is indirect IF, this one is direct IF. Next, I'm coming to the standard protocol. So immunofluorescent protocol means the preparation of immunofluorescence is a longer process, a lengthy process. So near about five to six hours, we need to develop this process. So a standard protocol for indirect as well as direct uh, fluorescence, immunofluorescence using a cultured cell or maybe tissue section. So if it's a culture cell, you can you can grow it over a cover slip. For better attachment, generally we are we, we use polyl lysine coated cover slip. 
So with the fixation by chemical crosslink here, this fixation has been done by PLL. Now then a humified chamber is needed for the fluorescence procedure and it prevents drying of the preparation and allows incubation in the dark. So all the process should be performed in dark and when you are using antibody, mostly the primary antibody better to incubate it at 4 degrees centigrade or perform the experiment at 4 degrees centigrade. And allow means using uh, or ex do, doing the experiment in, in dark means so that the fluorochrome has it retained, we will retain its, its light. It will not excite it during uh, the, the, the process. So the volume should be chosen that uh, should be applied on the cover slip and that can completely cover up and completely moisten the cover slip surface area. And you have to make sure that some the sample should not be fully uh, around dry. It should not be dry. It should be moist all the time during the preparation of your sample. So this is the flowchart of uh, standard immunofluorescent protocol. This is the indirect one. This is the direct one. First, you have to prepare your uh, your sample. It may be tissue section or maybe cells grown over the cover sleep. Then you have to fix it using some chemicals. Then you have to block it using serum or you may use non-fat dry milk. You may use simple DSA, certain percentage of DSA to block it. Then you have to add primary antibody or conjugated secondary antibody conjugated with protophore or else in direct mode you can directly add the primary antibody mark with uh, or conjugated with protophore. And then you have to go for subsequent staining process and then uh, you, you can analyze using under the fluorescent microscope or confocal microscope. So this is the detail about the standard immunofluorescent protocol, how to permineralize if you are using uh, the tissue section or the cells, how to fix the cell using formaldehyde, how to, how to, how to block the cells simply using 5% uh, uh, goat serum or 1% DSA, or how to wash it, what are the buffers to be used. This has been described here. And now I'm coming to the application part. So, Immunofluorescence is a commonly used molecular as well as cell biology uh, based technique. And there you can identify the, whether the, the cells have some specific antigens present there within the cell, within the tissue sections or not. So for that purpose, we need a fixed cell or a fixed tissue section. And this particular staining offers the unique possibility of revealing the molecules we are looking for in, its, in their native state. And minimizing potential perturbation of protein conformation, uh, conformation, localization, and also functions. So, which can uh, occur when using fluorescent protein therapy. So, this particular technique can be used for viral infections as a study, for cancer cell study, a different type of cancer uh, as cell assay in tissue section as well as in cell system based assays. So, that's all about human fluorescence.